everybody, welcome back to Avalon, episode 15. This episode, like I said last time, is probably my favorite episode in the series so far. Uh, this is sort of the point where we get to finally refine this whole wedge between our main grid and our new grid coming off of that diagonal road there. And honestly, it, it kills me to leave areas uh, sort of unfinished. So last episode was very tough for me to just like leave that for an episode, but um, I promise you that that was all with other things in mind and I knew that I wanted to do this in the next episode. So uh, we'll get to finally come in here and start to refine this area. So uh, again, to explain this for those of you who didn't see the last episode or maybe you're coming in new here, uh, what we're doing today is we're gonna build out some residential blocks that are very uniquely shaped actually. They're coming off of the main grid and they are connecting to this diagonal grid. So there's sort of uh, a sharp point at the edge of each lot. And there's, you know, a decent amount of space, but there's still, you know, a very high demand for space in these areas. So uh, these will be very densely packed together. And the goal is to get at least two of these lots done. They're going to be very much more detailed than uh, other areas, you know, around here, uh, particularly back towards what we worked on last episode. So uh, the purpose of these is to sort of create the border around the... Uh, downtown area so the goal here is to kind of develop a style that I like for having high density residential buildings and then use this all along uh, after the sort of decline of the skyline so uh, we've done this now on this side of kind of the main downtown area so we're gonna eventually go and do this to uh, all sides of the downtown area probably not in the same way I'm sure we're gonna have a uh, different kind of uh, developments. So I know that in this area it was very uh, office space and business oriented in the you know expansion outwards um, from last episode. So I'm sure we'll have some variation in what we actually do. But regardless, we're going to have tall skyscrapers coming immediately out from the downtown area that sort of uh, you know reduce in height as we go away from it, probably for a good two, three, or four blocks, and then we'll reach a point like this where we'll have high density residential uh, that sort of defines the uh, the edge of this downtown area. Now this episode I've I've kind of already defined a little bit how I like to do these uh, residential blocks but uh, this one in particular I think that I really found a method that I liked for filling out areas like this because uh, it's kind of tricky to find buildings that work well together and I've done this in a couple different ways in different episodes to uh, you know build these areas out and it feels like I've tried a few different things and I've struggled a lot in certain aspects uh, but this time around I think I really found a method that works well so I'm gonna break this down for you guys just a little bit so you can kind of understand um, exactly what my thought process is going into building out a, uh, a block like this so the first and most important thing is to create a little uh, entry point like this one I'm doing right here. So we need to have some networks of little, you know, two lane roads, just like very simple, that sort of run on the interior of blocks like this. And you could really, you know, in theory, and, and I'm sure in other cities that aren't like mine that have gigantic blocks, I'm sure those other cities will have, you know, uh, much smaller blocks or maybe you'll have a lot more side streets that go in between in that case You wouldn't have to worry about this But in larger blocks, we need to make sure that all of these buildings on the interior have road access So I start off with that and then the next big step is to define the lower border of this entire block So you saw me earlier on um, Just grab some buildings that I think look really nice on the street uh, the important thing here is one that they look nice Two that they have you know, relatively flat top pieces. I mean, they can be not flat, but it makes it harder. So uh, I like to try and find things that sort of fit nicely together and uh, most importantly, don't have any street parking on the front. So it needs to be um, almost as if it's like a, uh, you know, street shop style. They can even be commercial buildings, honestly, that work just as well. So, you know, anything like that works well for the uh, the lower parts of this now the next step is you may have seen it just now um a lot of these buildings especially in snowfall will have like curbs sitting out of them and i don't really like the look of the snowy curb sitting on top of our already you know sidewalk kind of area so i'll go in and 
I will plop down ploppable concrete, which is the same texture as the uh, the street sidewalk. And then I will, you know, obviously align it to height with the sidewalk and I'll plop it all the way around the, uh, you know, the the interior of this uh, this block area. And then I'll go in and I'll lower all of the buildings that have these extra little blocks to, um, you know, make them align again with the uh, the sidewalk and it'll get rid of all of those like extra little curbs and stuff that don't really look very good. So once we've done that, then I'll go in and I'll start adding in the taller buildings. And I've already kind of finished that last block, so you'll see it again more in this this next block over here. But uh, the taller buildings, it's kind of, uh, you know, hit or miss with how you're going to get these to fit well together. Um, I have found a few different sets that look really nice together, and uh, I'll usually do like taller buildings on top of the shorter buildings kind of along the edge first. And then I'll find some wider buildings that can kind of fit and fill in the center space. And, you know, in cases like this where we actually have a station running in between or maybe we have like a, you know, just a metro line or maybe even just some roads, you can uh, avoid this step by not having to fill out as much center space. Or you could even add little plazas in the middle, honestly. You could do really whatever you want. But in my case, I wanted to fill out the whole center area. So uh, that's where I put down a lot of these... Um, you know, wider buildings that sort of fill out that and just create a base for then the top piece, which will be uh, the tallest residential buildings that you want to use in the whole block. And uh, and that's kind of how I filled out that whole corner there. Uh, getting into this one, though, this one was a little bit different because, again, we had a station running through the middle. So you can see that I already built out the station. I added some ploppable surface pieces to sort of flatten out the areas around the station. And the goal is to integrate uh, some you know taller buildings and integrate this whole residential zone with this uh, this big station so i mean this whole block is just like full of residential buildings and actually in the front here we have these little uh, commercial kind of shopping type buildings and some restaurants and whatnot so that's kind of nice for the lower areas but uh, this upper area is just like residential building after residential building and there's there's literally like i mean in in game population anyway there's like I think three or four thousand people living in a single block, which in real life would be an absurd number. I don't know what the scaling is exactly from this game to real life, but it's a very high population for a single area. So I felt it necessary to have like an actual train station here. So I imagine that the way this works is there's a station here and then you go into some like kind of central public space. And then there's all these elevators that take you to different buildings or hallways so you can get to different, you know, residential buildings from there. And it really prevents you from even having to go on the street at all whenever you commute. You could literally, you know, walk into this public space. You could walk over to the train station. You could get to wherever you need to go from there without even stepping foot outside of the apartment, which is super, super cool. So hopefully we'll continue this on in other areas of the city as well. But I was a really big fan of the, uh, the, the end result of this whole area over here. Um, but you can see we've already defined now the lower sections of this block. So... I used a lot of those big flat uh, office space buildings to sort of uh, lay out a baseline for the um, you know the center part of this block. Uh, we had to be very careful about what buildings get put right next to this uh, train station because not only do we need to actually leave room for the station itself, but we need these buildings to have kind of a flat edge so that we can eventually create uh, some doorways and some entry points so it looks like this whole thing is integrated in with the station itself. So. I chose these nice uh, skyscrapers that I actually used, I think, back in the freight terminal as well. But they're uh, surprisingly they fit very well with this uh, this building style. So I tried to use some of those as well. And then once we had those in place, now I'm using a few of these little uh, townhouse apartments to um, just kind of build right up against the lower half of the station. Um, and I actually raised some buildings up to fit in perfectly there. So you might have noticed that a minute ago. Um, and now we're getting into some of the taller buildings. So I built out the front end here. I wanted to have like a nice corner building with all of these apartments that would have a nice view of the rest of the, the sprawl going outwards away from the downtown area. And then I took these big flat buildings here on the top to uh, sort of get right flush against the station itself. And I also used some ploppable surface to kind of, you know, complete the area and fill in some gaps where buildings are sort of you know, between each other and, and not really connecting as they should. So now that we have that, I'm going to use some of these like much taller buildings here to, um, 
you know, to add a little bit more of a dynamic look to the upper parts of the buildings. Um, I think I already tweaked most of them actually, I might have cut that out. Um, but also, of course, going back in, like I said earlier, and adding in some of these ploppable surface buildings or ploppable surface props and these, uh, you know, these supports for our railway, all these things that are going to sort of shape up the top parts of the buildings before we get into adding the props and the details and all the other things we're going to do uh, later on in the episode. Of course, we got to get some cranes in here, some uh, window washing cranes. I think these look really nice, especially for these big residential buildings that are just like full of windows. You definitely want to have uh, window washer cranes for that. Um, I kind of love the look of these on top of these big uh, circular buildings and, and you know curved looking buildings, especially on the corners here. So trying to get those in there when I can. And uh, we're really starting to see the shape of these two blocks coming into play. And you can see it's really chaotic. I mean, there's there are a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of residential buildings around here, but I kind of like the look. I think it's really chaotic and it's it really fits the uh, the thing we're going for here with uh, with Avalon. So anyway, I grabbed two of these very flat looking um, I guess they're just office buildings. And uh, here is where we're going to create the uh, the doorways into our public space. So I actually just measured out there how many windows down we need to get this level with the uh, the train station here. And then I placed them and I moved the whole thing back in place again. You can see after some checking and some readjusting of heights, we have these nice little doors that take you from the station itself right on into this kind of public space that I was talking about. Uh, I think this is a nice little touch that uh, when you actually are on the train itself and you're looking from that view coming into the station, it really does feel like everything is integrated. You're not just like getting off at some weird station that's like sandwiched between a bunch of buildings or whatever. It really does feel like it's a, a part of this whole complex. Uh, but once we've done that, I really wanted to do some interesting stuff with this little narrow alleyway between these two buildings because there is sort of some open space on top of the station. It's not really visible from the station itself. And I sort of imagine that this is where we'd have a lot of the uh, the utility and other things that the buildings would need to, you know, support these populations. Because uh, obviously there's not a lot of uh, ground, you know, real estate, I guess. It's uh, built up right against the roads themselves. So we've got this little uh, industrial kind of thing going on up here. Some some catwalks and some, uh, some piping, some uh, electrical stuff going on. Uh, and, and really, I just kind of love the look of all this stuff. It feels very chaotic, and uh, that, that was sort of the goal with this whole area, was to just have um, as much stuff going on as possible to really make the whole area uh, just feel interesting to look at. And uh, I think if we did something like this around the entire outskirt of the downtown area, uh, especially because the buildings dramatically reduce in height after these areas, it really does make the entire place look a lot better. Uh, so you'll see that more in the cinematics, uh, kind of what I'm talking about here, but um, you don't necessarily need to add this level of detail to every single block on the interior of the, you know, downtown areas that you're developing. You really just want to make sure that the areas that are exposed the most, the areas that will have the most dramatic difference in height, uh, these are the ones that need to have the most detail so that whenever you look at it, when it's all done, this is the stuff that you see. But anyway, getting into the last bit of this episode, uh, we're going to go back to a similar uh, design for the meetings that we did, I think, all the way back, I guess that would have been like episode four when we did the uh, the very first commercial district. So I'm using these nice little, uh, and actually taking stuff from it, you can see here, but I'm using these nice black uh, traffic, I think they're actually literally called like traffic um, railing or something like that, but they're, they're specifically designed uh, to protect pedestrians and also you know to be used in medians like this. Uh, using some reflectors to make sure nobody accidentally turned straight into a median. That would be very bad. <laughs> and then uh, finally getting into some of the street detailing around here. I wanted to make sure that these streets looked very nice. Like this is the area where we're going to have all kinds of little, you know, food trucks and little shops and park benches and, you know, just everything you'd expect out of a, a very high foot traffic area. And you can see already there's quite a bit of foot traffic. Uh, there will be a lot more as we continue to develop around these roads over here. So I wanted to make sure that this area looks very nice. But just like that, we are at the end of the episode now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think about this very dense residential blocking that we're doing around here. I'm very curious what you guys think about the design 
Uh, again, we'll have some painter mod stuff to sort of adjust some of the colors of the buildings and make it all look uh, a little more cohesive, but I'm a really big fan of the way this turned out. So uh, take a look at these cinematics and of course check back again next Friday for uh, the next episode on my channel. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.